Hey everyone, welcome to uh, Rick's DIY. Today I'm going to kind of go over how to check uh, your generators uh, for what kind of uh, neutral you have, whether it's uh, in the ground, whether it's a floating neutral or a bonded neutral, and kind of the implications of what that means. I got two different generators, actually, I got three here I'm going to show you generators. And I'll show you how to test for. Uh, what kind of news you got? It's really pretty simple. And what I have is I got a little Champion 1500 watt. Uh, it's basically a single circuit. Got a 120 volt uh, AC socket here, and then it's also got a 12 volt uh, 10 amp, which is really nice because uh, the newer ones now don't have the DC on them, so you can actually use this for charging like a battery bank or uh, charging up your car, tractor, anything like that. Um, so this larger one I have, and I got it disconnected right now because we're going to be moving soon, is a, uh, is actually powered off of natural gas or gasoline, it's a tri-fuel or propane, and I believe it's, uh, I'm trying to remember the brand on it, it's an older one, it's a, I think Dyna, or something like that, it's like 8,000 watts, uh, really great generator for kind of hard wiring into a whole house transfer switch panel but uh, so what you want to do on your meter and I got a, a fluke digital meter kind of clamp on style here is you're gonna want to turn it and uh, every meter is kind of a little different on their setup but either the ohm meter or uh, the continuity tester so that little kind of looks like a bunch of little lines it's actually kind of like a speaker um, a lot of the times they're on a separate setting if they are, uh, go to the one that beeps. I like the one that beeps. So this one will beep. So I got turned on. So it also gives me the ohm reading, the resistance basically, and then also uh, continuity. So it kind of gives you both um, on this particular meter. Sometimes they're on a separate setting. I'm just going to kind of clamp it there to have it in a place. And so with your uh, leads, you're going to want to check your neutral in your ground and if you're facing it uh, your the, the neutrals on the left or the nine o'clock position and your grounds gonna be at your six o'clock position the smallest of the uh, of the on the on the plugs on these uh, receptacle sockets uh, is your hot leg your power leg so just so you know for reference if you didn't know that already so uh, it doesn't matter which ones you kind of put in here I'm gonna connect these two together well first I'm gonna test my meter here should have done that to begin with. Should be able to hear that beep. And then on my uh, continuity on the meter, you can't see it, but it's showing a 0 0.01 or so kind of measurement. Just kind of giving me uh, the uh, the ohm. So I'm going to put this in on my neutral side and on the ground, and it's showing it's open. There's nothing there. It's called unbonded neutral on this one this is what a lot of Honda and the Yamaha kind of inverter type generators run uh, actually there's quite a few generators that run this uh, the unbonded but just for kind of reference to let you know no so on this one I'm going to check and they got 120 volt and there's also a 240 volt and a 120 240 volt uh, four-way plug so I want to check on just the regular 120 volt one is all I'm going to do I'm going to go to ground again and this time you can hear the continuity and hear it beeping. So this one, this one's bonded. So my neutral and my ground are connected together. I can also go to this ground screw here, go straight to my neutral. If I can get a good connector, you can see that from there it's connected. I can also go to this one. This is where my uh, ground is. Go to the neutral. See if I can get anything. I'm going to kind of test it to the ground here. See if the the ground on. So you can see the grounds are connected together. So that grounds the whole frame. And this frame should be grounded over here as well. If I can just go straight to straight in those. That's just kind of reference on that. And then I got my last one, which I haven't actually tested yet. 
see if you can see it there. This is a multi-equip. It's got a Honda motor on. This is what they call consider like a uh, commercial grade portable generator. These things are really expensive. These multi-equip ones. And I got this one off Craigslist for 75 bucks. It wasn't running. Guy didn't know what was going on. I basically had a looked like they might have poured uh, fuel in it that had oil in it. Uh, which this just runs straight off gas. So somebody put like the mixed gas in it and it gummed up the carburetor and kind of trashed it and the fuel filter. And so I basically just had to clean everything out, rebuilt the carburetor, and bought all the parts from MultiQuip. And uh, and I redid the wiring in here because it was all kind of, I mean, it's seen some pretty hard use. But uh, I'm going to go, and the plug's upside down, so it's actually on this side, it's the neutral. To the ground there we go got a good connection there so this one's got a bonded neutral as well I think that's just switching so this one's got a nice heavy duty like circuit breaker on it and this had a uh, with that sheet metal yeah you can probably see that it had a uh, little power meter on there kind of like what we have on on uh, on the champion here and uh, just a voltage meter and I couldn't find a replacement one for that and the ones from MultiQuip they wanted some astronomical like eighty dollars for it, so it wasn't worth it to uh, buy that just bypass that took the old one out it had been kind of smashed and uh, all the wires and it looked like somebody had kind of gone in here and uh, messed with it trying to figure out what was going on electrically wise I had found some broken connectors I had to redo but otherwise um, so there's that and, and then uh, on the next part here I'll, I'll kind of discuss what what that means so that's how you uh, test your generator to see what kind of uh, neutral ground bond that you have whether you have a floating or a ground okay so now bonded. that you understand uh, how to check your generator and once you find out what kind of generator you have, or if you have multiple kind, kind of go over here uh, what those implications are and how they may affect you. If you're like me and you have two different kinds of generator, uh, the most important thing to know is that if I'm running my floating neutral generator, which is a champion one, it doesn't have the ground bond. And that ground bond needs to be created somewhere in the system. If I tried to hook that generator up to, say, a gas furnace, it may not operate. It may uh, have a fault um, from the uh, control board on the uh, furnace saying that it doesn't show a ground. Um, this is very common with the uh, Honda EU series and some of the Yamaha inverter generators. Now I have that, I've used that Champion to run my gas furnace, but it's uh, the, the, the only one I've ran it on is the older 80% um, standard gas efficiency kind of furnace and it runs just fine. Where you see a lot of problems is people that run the Honda generators on the new high efficiency furnaces. Uh, they look at the power a little bit differently than the older ones. And so they'll have more faults, and sometimes on the Honda themselves, they won't work because it doesn't show the ground. And so to alleviate that problem, the, the main thing you have to do is either not switch the neutral or do what's uh, called a ground neutral bond plug. And so I'll show a picture of that here. And so all a ground neutral bond plug is, is basically you buy... Uh, a replacement male connector and then you connect with a wire a 12 or 14 gauge wire and you just connect a short, uh, a short section of that to the neutral and to the ground and you basically wire it up and then you plug it into one of your empty outlets on your generator and that will create a false ground neutral bond enough to power your gas furnace and uh, this usually has to be done a lot with people with RVs because on the RVs when they're running off an external generator 
they don't have the ground neutral bond so that needs to be created at the generator so that's basically an overview that most important thing if you have a ground neutral bond and you're running it to a furnace you could have a, a transfer switch that uh, switches the neutrals or doesn't switch it the safest one is to get one that switches the neutrals and there's only a few out there that do that uh, the Heezy uh, HTS 15 transfer switches do switch the neutral and that uh, is the safest way to do it but you can power it um, by just directly wiring it with the plug like I've done in the videos and kind of some of the different ways I've shown that you can power your furnace with a generator. Uh, thanks you guys for watching. Please if you get a chance uh, go to my website ricksdiy.com and get on my email list. I, I give away uh, things on there to, to people who sign up for the list and all it basically does is every time I, I have a new update uh, put out a new video or post it will send you an email um, sending you the link to it so you can kind of keep up on some of the stuff I'm going to be doing quite a few of these kind of question and answer videos coming up so kind of keep you guys connected again thanks for uh, watching and appreciate it